Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday, January 3rd meeting of the uh, 2023 meeting of the Conway Select Board. Um, I am Philip Cantor. Next to me is Chris Waldo. And joining us via Zoom is Eric Bowen. Come listen. So call the meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is the minutes. Um, and we get a chance to look at the minutes, but they were very good. Like the format still looks good. Oh, yes, the, the format does look good, right? doesn't it? Go um, to so motion to approve the minutes December 21st. Second, second, all in favor. I just raise your hand. Okay, oh, it's unanimous. <laughs> we have three warrants the accounts payable warrant in the amount of seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars, two hundred and eight, seven hundred twenty thousand, two hundred and eight forty. The payroll warrant in the amount of $120,514.46 and the payroll deduction warrant in the amount of $30,221.73. And I can just say, um, having gone through them, the accounts payable warrant is every, every quarter or whatever, they, they're very large because it reflects the payments that we make to our schools as a town. So. I think of that 720,000, 400,000 was our quarterly chunk to the frontier. Uh, the, and, and everything else, the, the other one, the payroll warrant was 120,000, but a lot of that was our insurance payments and unemployment payments, et cetera. So everything was fine. Um, everybody else is okay with them. Yeah, we moved to approve those three warrants. Second. All in favor? Aye. And um, okay with everybody, we can go straight to this new business since Natalie has joined us. Um, hey, Natalie. Can we do public comments first? Sure. Sure, Mary. If we can do public comments first, since you were here first, what can, what, what can, we, what can we do for you? Well, rather, let me just rephrase that uh, because most likely we can't do much for you, but, um, but uh, we can certainly listen to you. Then it's about what I can do for you. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Marianne McCullough. I am the new pastor at United Congregational Church in Conway. I thought this was next week. Okay. Well, we had talked about it, but then she told me I could join by Zoom. And so Zoom, here I am. Um, Wonderful. Um, well, congratulations, new pastor. Thank welcome you. To Con welcome to Conway. Thank you. Um, we are hoping sincerely that our building will be open in the next month. Um, we actually were hoping it would be open in November, but as you know, a variety of things get in the way of that. I think all we're waiting on now are inspections, but I'm on tonight to introduce myself to you to let you know that I am available to assist the town in whatever fashion I can be of most help, but also to let you know that it's um, important for our congregation that our, our congregation wanted to make sure that the community knew that we consider our building to be the community building. So if there are ways that the community um, needs it or can use it, we wanna make sure that folk know that it's available for that. There will be a formal open house once we finally get occupancy of the building, and certainly you'll all be invited, but basically that's the reason I'm on tonight, is to let you know that um, the church is functioning, even though it's not in its building, and it's hoping to be of great service to the community. Do you have any questions for me? No, it's great to, great to know that, that, you know, that church has always been... I mean, there was a church, but the, the church was why the town was created. And yes. um, the church and the school was why the town was formed. And, um, you know, it's always it's always been something that be, I, I was part of the dinner. That was the last public function in the church two days before the tornado hit. The oh, annual wow. Wow. historical society winter dinner. Wow. And it was a, we had 55 people there that night and, every, and, and a live band and dancing. And it was one of the better historical society dinners whatever and then uh that yeah that was less than 48 hours before the hurricane <laughs> but, wow yeah 
and that was a great space that downstairs then and use that. So. I have left my contact information with the clerk. If I can be of any any help um, on any situation, please feel free to contact me. Wonderful. Mary, thank you so much. Yeah, sorry, I don't know if you can see me. I'm Veronique, I'm the town administrator. I just wanted to mention, in case you're not aware, that we do have the Conway Currents newsletter. And yes. if you happen to know your date of the open house by January 20th, it can be in the February edition. Yes, um, my understanding is that we have put in an announcement for the January edition announcing me. Um, but as soon as we know what the date is, it will be in there. There will be wide publicity for this open house. But thank you. It's nice to meet you. I hope to talk with you in person. Marianne, it's Natalie Blay, the state rep. If you could just make sure that we also get notice of that open house, it would be amazing. Oh, yes, you will. <laughs> okay, thank you. You're welcome. Have a good evening, folks. Hold on, Marianne. I'm Chris Larby with the recorder. Can you make sure we get that notice too? With the, you're with the recorder? Yep, yep. Okay, yes. Oh, yes. It will be widely publicized. You're checking all the boxes tonight, Marianne. There you go. One-stop shopping, Marianne. One-stop yeah. shopping here. I try to be efficient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, great. Anyway, um, I, happy new year to all, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. again. Thanks. Thank you. Um, with that, we have Representative Natalie Blaze annual update. <laughs> an update, an annual update. Was it annual? Well, yeah. Can you believe it? Okay. <laughs> no, I, I really appreciate you taking some time out of your meeting time tonight. I know how busy you all are, but I did just want to take an opportunity to check in. Um, after coming back to the Conway Festival of the Hills and us all getting back together for a really incredible uh, day together and just touch base with you and see what's on your mind. Um, I know we've been, I want to just make sure to recognize Corinne Coriat, uh, who is my legislative aide, who is also here tonight. Um, you know, we've, we really appreciate the partnership that we have with the town of Conway uh, on a lot of different fronts, um, from bridges <laughs> to, to forests and, uh, and, and everything in between. And so I just wanted to make sure that I, I schedule time to touch base with each of the now 18 communities in the first Franklin district to see what's on your mind. If there are, if there are things that I should be aware of going into this new two year cycle um, and just make sure that we provide the space to have this conversation. Uh, you know, for me, it's, it's, it's the, the, un, the, 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 just the unfinished projects from last year and from the year before that they are, it, it, our bandwidth in this town is somewhat limited, although we punch above our weight, that's for sure. You do. You do. Um, um, but, you know, the, 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 uh, the public safety building yes. the, and, and the desire to convert this building that we're in now, the town hall, into the, well, the building for all. The, the fact that we run two municipal buildings um, and that we're running one municipal building for four, for four employees, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, so we're trying, but, but all that requires money that we don't really have and uh, all that. So it's, it's, a, you know, if, if we were, if, if we were a, a wealthier town or had a, an actual ta a tax base, a commercial tax base, these, all these things would, would be so much easier. Um, yeah. And I have to say that, you know, when we did the public safety complex tour, and included Auditor Suzanne Bump and the chair of the House Public Safety Committee um, on, on a tour of complexes, public safety complexes in the area. Conway certainly made an impression. Uh, it was representative of what many of the public safety complexes in Western Massachusetts uh, are facing in terms of challenges. And um, I was just talking with Chair Gonzalez, I think it was yesterday, all the days are blending together right now, yesterday, as we were at an event with Governor-elect 
uh, Maura Healy and Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll uh, about the, the need to invest in infrastructure in rural communities in Western Massachusetts. He was there that day on that tour. Uh, it certainly made an impact on him to see the facilities uh, that were in Conway and Ashfield. And um, you know, we'll continue to work with him. We're, we're in the process of starting this new session. Um, I don't know if he will continue to be the chair of public safety, uh, but whomever is the, the new chair, I will certainly be in close contact with, and I'm working with Senator Comerford right now on, on how we refile that bill and what it looks like. Well, it's nice to know that we made an impression, but the impression was <laughs> I know. because I know. <laughs> the impression was because we had the most disgusting municipally owned bathroom that any of them had ever seen. Um, I have to be frank, I had never seen a bathroom with a door <laughs> and no wall. It really was. So, uh, so it really that's was. like a, that's like an impression, but it's also <laughs> a mark of shame. No, I, I in all honesty, I mean, e each one of the facility, the public safety facilities in many of the communities across Western Massachusetts are facing a challenge like the bathroom. Uh, in Leiden, it's you you can't get in you can't get into the fire truck if you don't open the garage door. Um, it, you know, the, in each one of these public safety complexes, uh, there are challenges, and yeah, you know, I'm I'm grateful to be working with Senator Comerford to be able to try to um, address what Auditor Bump raised in a report about this serious, um, longstanding infrastructure challenges that that our communities here have have been trying to address and so we'll keep we'll keep at it uh and and we appreciate you welcoming in everyone on that tour into the community uh to see exactly what you're working with on a day-to-day -day basis Did we lose the town of Conway? <laughs> Am I, I'm frozen. I'm not frozen. Eric, I see you moving. Mary, I I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm coming down with the flu. So that's why I'm on Zoom oh, too. No. So I'm, <laughs> I'm I, think we lost, I think we lost the town, the town hall. <laughs> oh, wow. I think, yeah. too. I think the town hall is frozen. <laughs> um, well, Chris, uh, are you there? Yeah, this happens like <laughs> once a meeting, I would say. So I uh, need to come back. <laughs> oh yeah, Bernie's gonna reboot. Ugh, we're here. We're <laughs> here. We need infrastructure help across the board. The, the incredible <laughs> reboot option. It's really incredible. It's like uh, we're always having to MacGyver everything. Um, well, you are the first. Uh, I just want to say thank you for for taking the time because you are the first of of our uh, meetings with towns. Uh, leading into the 193rd session, and uh, Corinne and I are actually leaving for Boston tonight uh, uh, to be sworn in tomorrow. So we'll get right to work for you. Wow! Congratulations! <laughs> Congratulations! But you know, there's a. I hope you you have my cell phone number. You have my email address. You know where to find me. And I, I just want to make sure that I do. Um, yeah. So the, the other thing, you know. What, well, that the DCR commissioner, whoever that is going to be yes. tomorrow or whatever, um, once it, once we like let the committee know, the subcommittee know that that is going to be happening, they're all really keen on that. Like, I get asked that almost every day. What's the status with the DCR guy? What's when? He, when are they going to come out? When? It, and I, I, that's that's why it's good that I don't have your cell phone number memorized i'm never <laughs> no it was a it was a really bad timing situation with the change in the administration right. when we were hoping to get the dcr commissioner out to conway um i will say that um the governor elect maura healy has in a plan stated that there uh, she would like to see a moratorium on logging in state forests so we will see what happens from here. Uh, but at this point in time, it's sort of a waiting game to see uh, who she will name as DCR commissioner or if she will keep uh, Commissioner Rice on board. And, and we'll go from there. And as soon as I know more, I will make sure to, to be in touch with the town to either get that person 
you know, out to Conway uh, to have a conversation or uh, figure out what, whatever the next best step is. Um, and I do just want to give a shout out to, to Veronique and, and the entire town, really, in terms of your communication with me. Um, this bridge that's been out in Conway, I know, has been a real worry uh, for many residents in Conway. And, and I want to also thank uh, the Division I MassDOT Highway Administrator, who has been incredibly responsive, uh, as well as every state agency that I've talked to about how this bridge outage is impacting residents in Conway. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll see some, some movement there soon. Uh, but she's really. We, we have. Yeah, we have. We are seeing movement. Yeah. Um, she's they, she's been, been moving the, mountains to make this happen. She's. And, and, and it's, and it's, down. it's like, <laughs> even if it's like minor movements, like people are telling me like, oh my God, I saw something like a truck was there today. Yeah. <laughs> just wow. like, just that, that people know that things are happening, you know, like they That's... appreciate that things take time, but it's. Uh, the need to engineer like, emergency okay. bridge. That, that that is that that's what they're waiting on the that it it you would think those things are sort of cookie cutter pre-engineered to some extent that they could just plop them down but no it <laughs> hasn't, <laughs> hasn't been built yet but i just got an email today from mr burnett um he showed me a picture that the old one's already been removed and said they're hoping about three weeks before the new one is installed which is i think a phenomenal and I have to say that it is a true testament to uh, your advocacy and from hearing directly from constituents who are impacted and a true public servant in the uh, administrator for MassDOT Highway Division uh, at a Division I. Uh, Francesca is really amazing and we're lucky to have her. And I wanna make sure to, to give her some kudos and her team for really uh, thinking outside of the box and trying to find a way to get a replacement bridge there as quickly as possible. I agree. I agree. The, the other things, you know, we're, we're, we're perpetually in need of more chapter 70, more chapter 90. Um, we're uh, that, you know, the, any rural schools initiative where, where that's, you know, and then the, the, the definition of rural school such that frontier fits in it instead of being sort of just barely fitting in just a little bit. Um, but that's, yeah, as you that's, know, uh, I've been I've been living this and Chris, Chris also Chris Larby from the recorder here has also been living uh, the rural schools commission report, as has Corinne <laughs> and I over the last <laughs> give a thumbs up from Chris here. Uh, <laughs> over the last year, uh, you know, I was very lucky to have been named by Speaker Mariano as the House Chair of the Rural Schools Commission alongside Senator Adam Hines. Uh, we put out a report with 36 recommendations. Uh, we are currently in the process of developing an omnibus bill uh, to address the policy and budgetary recommendations included in that report. Um, we uh, you know, I've touched base with uh, the Healy Driscoll administration to see what we can do to get uh, some of the recommendations included in their first budget, which they are currently in the process of developing, um, but also you know, talking with them about other ways to advance the recommendations in that report. So we're trying to look at every possible opportunity here to advance those recommendations, whether it's uh, through this incoming administration uh, or through legislation and the budget process on, on the, the legislative side. Um, in terms of chapter 70 funding, as you know, we, we were able to put a, a larger amount of money uh, to our communities uh, with the, the wrap funding, the winter road assistance program. Uh, that is also something that we are highlighting that was incredibly impactful for rural communities and are, are talking with the Healy Driscoll administration about continuing a program that, that adds on to the chapter 70 uh, program that focuses on roadway miles, which is what we have a lot of. And, and that is exactly what the, the RAP program targeted. So we're trying to see what we can do to get that put right into their very first budget. And it's certainly something that, that we'll all be fighting for 
um, on the on the legislative side as well. And I know I know for from the school that the biggest bang for the buck that you can get to help our town out and the, our neighboring towns is the regional transportation and uh, to make sure that that's fully funded yeah. and that, that it's so hard to get them to understand that that cat budget category holds us back so much just from planning when you can't tell what your revenues are going to be from year to year and when a when the difference between 50% and 70% or 80% reimbursement is a difference between having being able to do something or not being able, with any other department or nothing. And you don't know that until the very end of the, it, the whole way that that is done is so unfair to us small regional towns. And all we yeah. want is certainty from year to year so that we yeah. can find it is one of the recommendations in the rural schools report uh, is, is looking at fully funding regional school transportation. Uh, the report also includes a recommendation to create a rural transportation account, which is very specific to rural schools like Mohawk or you know, pick, pick any school here in Western Massachusetts where you have a very large geographic area where you're having to transport students. So um, we're trying to get at the transportation piece in every single way that we can. Uh, we're lucky in that there were there have now been two uh, efforts, two reports dedicated to addressing the challenges of school transportation in the Commonwealth. Um, so I, I, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to to make some progress there. I think like for it, fully funding it is great, but even more important for, to your school committees is just the predictably funding it so that the amount is known in advance. Um, I would trade, I would I would gladly trade from 100% funding to 80% funding if there was a five-year commitment to, or, or whatever, a multi-year commitment to fund at that level so that we can plan for it. That's what really is the problem. I, I hear you. It's one of the, th the things that we heard loud and clear in the commission is that, um, school districts, school committees really wanted some certainty, some predictability uh, moving forward. And that is something that I have, it's a message that I've delivered to uh, Speaker Mariano himself, himself uh, and have certainly had several conversations with the chair of the education committee, uh, indicating that that is something that we have heard loud and clear as through this, um, through the rural schools commission public input process, which was extensive. Uh, and, and it is something that we heard loud and clear from rural communities across the entire Commonwealth. I mean, I, I could go on and on, but, <laughs> you know, we, but, but they, you know, beggars can't be too choosy. We are beggars. We are beggars. Um, anything, Chris? Erica, you got anything anything to add? I, I know. I just I, I just want to thank you for your advocacy and your representation. I really appreciate it. And the town appreciates it. And I feel like we're in a really solid place. <laughs> thank you. And I and I'm I feel awful that you feel awful, Erica. I'm so sorry okay. that you're coming down with a cold. But I, like I said, you all know how to reach me. So if anything ever comes up, don't hesitate to reach out. I just wanted to make sure to provide the space here at a select board meeting to, to say hello uh, as we go into the 193rd third session uh, and, and really get to work here. Super, super. I just wanted to make a little plug for home rule petitions before we <laughs> finish. Um, Ronnie knows the Thank struggle you. of the home rule petition. Um, we're going to try to be a little bit more organized and timely <laughs> with our home rule petition. So hopefully, I think we're going to set a deadline at some point to like the last time when we can file them to make sure that they all are done before the end of the session. Um, and if you could just give me as far heads up as possible and just like maybe try to if, if there are officers that are getting older and maybe looking to turn 65 in the next few years, getting me like their information, just so we have kind of a running list of who will need an extension in the next five years or something would be helpful. Um, I know Veronique already got me the last one that you just passed. So we'll file that 
in a couple weeks, but just trying our best to, to get those done as quickly for you guys. And the last one that we did for our police chief, unfortunately, it, it didn't stick because he, you know, he, we knew, we knew, we knew that he <laughs> submit his, his um, letter of retirement and we only so had I've heard. <laughs> It was only a so, so those two home rule those two home rule petitions are still currently happening till, till this evening right now yeah. Uh, yeah. we've been pushing actually all afternoon <laughs> uh, and and all day as well as in the last couple of weeks and months to try to get those through as as late files uh, which points to you know what what Corinna is um, is trying to be more proactive about in our office is. If you have officers, whether police or fire, uh, that are coming up against that 65 year age limit uh, that is statutory in the Commonwealth, we do have to submit those home rule petitions. It does have to be approved by the town. Um, and we do have to get that paperwork to the clerk uh, to file. So uh, if, if there's a way for you to sort of survey and, and uh, determine whether or not that is something that we need to be working on, um, in addition to the regularly filed bills that I offer uh, on policy, you'll be you may be surprised to know that we offer an additional 20 bills annually uh, that are home rule petitions that we have to uh, also shepherd through the process on behalf of each and every uh, town in the first Franklin district that that needs that special um, legislation. So uh, to the extent that we can work with Corinne and my office to, to identify if you might need that, yeah, uh, we can. It's really about like, you know, we've had a few situations where people either file them after they turn 65 or are like within a month of turning 65 and we just can't get <laughs> them done in that small yeah. of a timeline. Not with right. town of Conway. You guys have been very helpful and proactive, <laughs> but other towns, <laughs> we won't, who we won't name. Yeah, and Chris, and, Chris Larrabee, and Chris Larrabee will not publicly name. <laughs> I will though. I, I, I have no problem bad mouthing other towns. No, Usually no. Not, <laughs> no, we appreciate your cooperation just in making sure we want to get you, we want to make sure that we're getting legislation through as quickly as we possibly can for you. Yeah. Uh, and home rule petitions often come in as late files. You know, timely filed bills for the legislature have to be filed on the House side by January 20th. Uh, that doesn't time up so well with town meetings. Uh, so just by nature, uh, the home rule petitions often end up being late filed bills and we shepherd them through every step of the seems like million step process. Uh, yeah, to it's a long process. To get it to get those through and and we appreciate you all and what you're what you're doing every single day likewise 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> well with, with that uh i hope it's okay i'm gonna step off because i need to get i need to go to corinne we're gonna <laughs> and we're gonna go to boston <laughs> before yeah, the so. race <laughs> travel safe travels thank you for your time <laughs> Thank, thank you, thank you, you all. all. I appreciate everything yeah. you do. And I really do want to thank you for, for your public service because what you do for your town is really extraordinary. So thank you so very much. Thank you very much. All right, we'll talk to you later. See ya. Bye. 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 Right. Um, next on new business, Ron Sweet. Ray, source of funding for tree work. We have some photos of the recent storm that we just had. Of, I'm not sure how the deal is. We didn't used to deal with it. But we being told that we have to now. I assume we have to. Polling area got hit very hard with that snowstorm. So we didn't get much of anything here in the center of town. And I'm not sure how to, I mean, I don't have in my budget monies to deal with this new issue. 
for this current year. I will be asking for monies in the next budget that will help cover. So I'm looking for some understanding of how to move forward with the existing situation. So I was saying in the last meeting that I felt extremely bad that I didn't voice more of my opinion towards the shippers and the hauler. Um, I, in some of those photos, obviously some of those are very large stumps and trees. Some look like brush, so we can't do anything with the brush right now. What do you want me to do? Uh, well, I mean, if I mean, if, if, at this point, I, I mean, money wasn't planned to rent a chipper out of this year's budget, and I'm pretty tight on my budget. Um, is there any maybe some other funding available? So wait, I mean, Ron, you don't have a chipper. Uh, I I thought at a previous meeting you had a you made an arrangement to like rent a chipper kind of on a sort of long term basis from it someone. Is that even, not? If they would have approved it, it would have been a year and a half till you got yeah. it. But it also wasn't under the assumption of coming out of this year's budget for the rental. Okay, all right. So and you don't have a chipper that. available right now. I mean. Uh, it's the money to rent the chipper. It's, um, right. Okay. So you need twelve thousand to the end of the year. If we, <laughs> if we rented it on a, you know, so we had it all the time, which is right now it, we have about a good months with what's on the ground right now. It'll probably take us a good months ending weather. To clean up the trees. So, so let's say the two. I had with the chipper, with the company that I have been renting the chipper from, from when we do tree trimming, um, is sorry, my brain just went from it's two thousand dollars a month. But if he needs it, he takes it. What's that? Isn't the provision that he needs it? He yes. It. If he gets in a bind, it's a spare right. chipper for him. He's willing to do. If I was to go to a normal rental place, we're looking at about just under five thousand dollars for the rental a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's offering us a, a really good deal. Um, but on the other hand, I don't know if he's willing to rent, give it to, let me take it for a month for 2000 and then not rent it for the you know, next, it was kind of like a- Long-term. Yeah, long-term rental thing that he was offering. Well, that would be a good question to get answered then, because that's a big difference um, in the amount. But um, <laughs> I, I know Veronique has, uh, uh, has suggested the reserve fund um, which is supposed to be for emergencies or unanticipated expenses. Um, and the committee that has that that is entitled to make the decision about whether or not a given request is in fact a emergency or unanticipated expense is the finance committee, not the select board. So um, so we would need to have a joint, meeting with them and they would have to be through, but um, it, it, the, the complication is that, we, I mean, you know, we, we, you had a request for, for you know, uh, denied, voted down at town meeting for a chipper. It can't be, I mean, it would have to be a short-term, whatever. It couldn't be, it couldn't be the legal equivalent of an end around that vote. So we wouldn't be able to we wouldn't be able to buy a chipper, for instance. Um, and uh, you know whatever. And I don't want to. So we're going to have to have this discussion again in front of the, the. Right. So I mean, if we can find a way to get the highway department through to the end of the fiscal year, then we can also have a discussion. Um, 
Well, the budget. Be in my budget. Exactly. Yeah. For the next year. Unfortunately, this came about after the budget's already been right. set. You know, we've been working out of this budget without that part of it. This came about during this fiscal year. So but I mean the, the budget that you do have that that anticipated you trimming some trees. Yes, doing we some have, trimming work. We have trimmed. Um, right. You did in the fall and everything. Yes, and, we we, just, but we it, had two months, I think, of the trip that were already this year. And it, but your budget as it didn't envision trimming at all in the spring or early summer? Well, we did more this fall because of the way things came out. Yes, so I mean we're we're planning on it, but no matter how you look at it, somehow the the um. So what are you saying? Don't do trimming any of the because we I, we basically got probably another month that we had planned on trimming. So you're basically saying don't do any trimming, just do the cleanup. No, I'm not. I I don't know enough to say that. I don't I don't know. I I don't know enough to say that. Oh okay. um, no, I'm just making but, it clear what. That's what I thought you were saying. I'm okay. So somehow all this extra work with the trees, somehow it's got to get done unless we just leave it. I don't think that's going to work very well. Well, you know, the, 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 the other side of that coin, though, is that the, you know, what we, what we do at town meeting is a contract with, the residents of the town in terms of what we're going to spend every year and and um you know the reserve fund is one way is one additional thing to look at but that's just for unanticipated thing it's a good question whether or not you know the the people that requested that we follow the law which is which is all that they requested in, in the fuck we haven't been right that's all oh, that's on us that's on us not them right i understand that and like you know the fact that we weren't complying with the law as a town is that does that create an unanticipated expense? That does that fact? I mean, I, well, I don't know. I don't it's know. not necessarily that we weren't following the law. It's that we misunderstood the law. Right. It's, it's kind of a little bit different well, because the information that I had says that we were doing it right. Unfortunately, town council is saying that what was shown to me, they're saying wrong. So, Ron, um, is there town road work, like tree work, that you feel like you should be doing now? That if you do that, that will exhaust your budget so that you won't be able to do all of the things that you anticipated doing like through the end of this fiscal year. Um, I mean, are like are there are are there like trees at the side of the road that you feel like um are gonna, I don't know, that, that you're neglecting or that you're not gonna deal with because you just feel like you don't have that in your budget this year? Well, pretty much what happened was the, the, the snowstorm right. a week ago took a lot of trees down and now they're just we pushed them off the side of the road. That's all we ever used to do with them. And the landowners and stuff would take care of them. Okay, so. Well, now I get this where I get phone calls. Well, there's a tree branch beside the road. You need to come take care of it. Um, I'm not quite sure how to handle that because we don't have the equipment to deal with it. Have, have you had any of the, those calls yet since the last snowstorm? Not since the last but, snowstorm. But okay. the, so. the, the, the tree at the side of the road that's already at the side of the road and not still attached to root structure in the ground, that doesn't trigger the new law, the, the, the hearing and the law. No, but what we was, what we had for people complaining about was things weren't being cleaned up. So let me ask you, so when you when you do have a chipping, are you chipping on site 
or are you picking up some of that? Like some of that stuff looks like you could throw it in like a dump truck or or, or whatever and haul it somewhere and drop it off until you have a pile and then go at it with that chipper. Are you doing that or are you doing the chipping on site? Chipping on site. Okay. I mean, every time you handle it, it it's time consuming. I mean, it, it, that's the other part of this is this wasn't planned. I mean, the time that we spend for what we do, that wasn't that's never been included in our time. Um, and now we have, we're going to have to spend time dealing with this, or maybe not. I don't. So, so even though um, the trees were not, you know, done through taken down through a hearing with the tree warden, the problem is now our understanding is that the town is responsible for what happens at the edge of the road. So that's that's what's changed. Yeah, we know that doesn't that present a danger though? If you leave like large branches like that on the side of the road, you can't just leave it there, right? Doesn't that present a danger to somebody who? might veer off a little bit and well that was one of the the complaints about you know the tree work was that you know that was yeah that it was posing a danger to motorists or bicyclists or whatever um i can i see this i just kind of see these two, <laughs> two different criteria here yeah. you have stuff you can chop up with a chainsaw or whatever and throw in a truck and you have stuff that there's no way. And some of the stuff that is is like too big to do that with would also be too big for the chipper because the chipper can only take up to 18, 18 inches, right? So we would have to go and we chip what we put on site, right? And then the rest would be picked up and put in a truck and stockpiled. And then we're going to have to hire somebody to come and grind it all. At, you know, once we get a pile. Whereas this is all no, I hear what you're saying. This is all very big expense that's coming to the town. So the town said no to buying a new chipper. That doesn't mean we don't need a chipper. Right. So we need to rent a chipper. I mean, personally, so I, as the one five thing, years. Yeah, but the one thing I think we need from, from you is to get that confirmation from the guy you're renting from. Like if we're getting that two thousand a month. What's the period for that? Does that need to be for the full year before he says 2000 months, six months, three months? Like, if we can get some a confirmation on that, so we know uh, the, the, period, the time period and the budget that we need for that time period, that would be very helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, we already know. And especially because the smaller the amount that you request, the more likely it is that the, that the answer would be yes. And if, um, because one of the main criteria for all this uh, uh, reserve fund stuff is that <clears throat> you're supposed to be doing it, you know, when, when you look at a given expense, you're supposed to be looking at it to see whether it, if it's too small of an amount to justify a special town meeting, then like you would look favorably if it's a large enough amount that a special town meeting would be appropriate and they don't give you like an exit and but but to me there's a big difference between two or four thousand dollars and twelve or fifteen or twenty thousand dollars and that's you know and that you know maybe it would have been a good idea to have this on the warrant at special town meeting or you know have it as an either or thing with the the chipper or something like that but and when I know when you stood up you talked about how if they don't give the chipper then it's going to cost more in the that then your budget request in June for June is going to be more, but I don't remember you talking specifically, at, you know, on the floor town meeting is saying that if, if you don't fund the chip or like I need something from the reserve fund to get by, whatever. So, um, but like, well, yeah, the all which is, is a long way, all which is a long way to say like two thousand dollars would be much better than twenty thousand dollars. Like, um, well, the other, well, it's not going to be twenty five, right? Because we only got six months left yeah. in this budget, right? So hopefully we're looking at twelve less, more less. Yeah, yes, like less. Because twelve is special time. Well, but if here. he if he said if that it's Ron said he's not willing to 
give it to us for one month at a time rather than like say to the no, end that's what of the he asked me to do was find out what, right. what he's going to do. Right, right, exactly. So but you never we don't you don't do tree work in February or March generally. I mean yeah we do. But we, not it depends on the way the weather is. I mean you know I mean like right now if this weather continued we would probably consider doing some tree work. Um, it's it's this whole rental thing is such a huge issue to deal with because so we rent some like the boom lift to do tree trimming and the chicken and then all of a sudden weather turns so you lose all that time that you've rented the machine for that you can't use it because but, you're having to deal but with you it. gain all the residents asking every day what's he doing with that chipper parked at the side of the road why isn't he using it <laughs> i'm sorry but it's it's exactly right i mean but they'd also complain if the road wasn't plowed so damn if you do damn if you don't run so I'm just looking Nature for the beast. guidance on, I mean, should we just leave the trees until next budget year? I, I personally be okay with that, but um, I, I know that's probably not the responsible public safety thing. So I um, the, get the number as low as you can. Come, we'll talk to the, you know, we'll, and we'll have a meeting with the finance committee and see what- I mean, I have no problem with just running it for a month and see where that takes us. I mean, I will talk to them and find out, you know. So it would be 5,000 for a month though? Good if we number. rent it from somebody else. Good I, know I don't know what he did though. So that's, yeah, I mean, we can't just, yeah, yeah. You have to nail that down. Yeah, I'll find that. I'll talk to him and see what he's willing to do. <laughs> No, but the, the reserve fund is not like the way to fund uh, town departments. Wasn't so expecting, I had no idea what was available. The way to do is like a special town meeting, or I mean, plus the reserve fund would you know it's it's forty thousand dollars. Have we spent anything from it? That would we spend from it yet? Uh, it wasn't very much. I put in a request for um to cover. IT because we had to get Comcast because we right, used right. the signal. I right. there was another one I did. It was like a few thousand. Minutes. Yeah, I want to say three or four thousand. I don't think it was anything that rich. So but you, they they cautioned about how you don't want to you don't want to exhaust that down to zero in case you actually do have mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. actual emergencies. Um, Newbie question here: What about free cash? Free cash is uh, is not for current. Fiscal year expenditures. It has for it, it, well, and it's a yeah. It would be at the town kind of meeting too. So yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I mean, it's basically if it's if it's funded by the town, it's reserve fund, or you know, that's it, basically. Well, so fund. I mean, what's what's the worst case scenario if Ron doesn't rent a chipper? Um, I mean, like, what, what does your budget look like, Ron? I mean, for the like, if you didn't have to do what you now feel like the legislation says that you have to do, um, like, would you be fine through the end of the fiscal year? I mean, are there like, are there trees at the side of the road that you would like, that you would normally leave if you hadn't now understood that the legislation says that we have to deal with them? It's typically what we've always done is left them. Um, and usually the landowner, Took care of, you know, cleaned them up and that kind of thing. I mean, typically when a tree fell down, I'd go out and I'd open the road up. And that's that was the extent of our dealing with the tree. So are all of these on some landowner's property or are some of these on town property? No, they're on town. Okay. I mean, is that potentially a compromise that like, I don't know, public safety can say we don't think this is a safety issue right now that we're like we recognize yes ultimately it's the town responsibility to you know chip and dispose of these trees but right now we don't feel like it's 
posing a safety threat and we can you know let it <laughs> let it go for another you know fiscal year that's a very um loaded question <laughs> whether it's a, um it's been two weeks now since the storm and they're still there i haven't had any complaints about that they're there because you can't tell they've been there since the tornado. There's been just been nothing but trash trees all that up and down that road since the tornado. Well, well these are definitely noticeable. I mean, I'm willing to, you know, want to see if we can try to get to June. The problem is, it come June, our the type of work that we typically are doing in June is not this. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it's kind of what happened this fall was because we did so much tree work this fall that we took away from what we should have been going on in some of the roads and we was trying to get things cleaned up. You know, well, we had the chipping and stuff, and so we got behind on our normal road maintenance stuff. Just trying to make things happen. I mean, we had the wrap money that we wasn't planning on that kind of got thrown in there that we had to have so that we didn't lose it. Um, so there's projects that we didn't finish this fall that hopefully will be okay come spring. This weather isn't helping that. No, no. no. never does. You get four inches of rain, and it turns really cold, and then it's a challenge. Yes, it has been for numerous residents in town too. I heard a lot of flooding stories. A lot of a lot of flooding stories from surprising people. Houses that don't normally flood, but so let it slide for the time being. I, I will find out the information right. yeah. on the chipper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, and, and then yeah. If, Find the information out, and you know we can. Then we can do something with the finance and schedule a joint meeting with the finance committee. There's no guarantee that they're going to look finally on this. Um, in fact, I can pretty much say at least one of them won't. But um, but you know. Well, our, our first that's what votes are for. Our first joint meeting will be on the 23rd. Um, so I mean that's already scheduled. So if we want to, but it, I'd be interested if there, if you know, you've got you said a month's worth of work. Right now, right it's now, just what's happened in the so two weeks ago. If the gentleman is willing to not have us, you know, do the six months, right. maybe if you could do like a month coming up and then a month later on in the spring, and I don't know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure how that's all yeah. going to work out, but I'll definitely talk to him and see what, he, what he's got to offer. Just, no matter I mean, how you look at it, it's a really good deal compared to going to a normal renting company. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, if the highway department exhausts their budget before the end of the fiscal year, out of necessity, because there's like, you know, stuff that they have to, there's just stuff that has to get done. Like, like what happens then? You know, is that at the point, like, is that up to the finance committee? Do we go to the reserve fund? Do we go to free cash? Like, how does that? Like has that ever happened? <laughs> that does happen. That does happen. In that from from you you hear about that happening, and you you put employees on unemployment for a little while. Okay, so that actually so happens. Don't want that to happen. No, no, that's not. That's uh -huh. that is a failure of municipal governance okay, so. when that happens. Um, that's not. That's why I'm sitting here now, right? Trying to figure out what to do with the added expenses come upon the highway department. 
Yeah. So write us a check on the spot, for sure. Yeah, the legislation built for you know populated areas to save trees. Look, is yeah. destroying our budget here. Well, something about more it, than it's than from the are. group that wanted us to give advance no, five year advance notice to write a law for someone that's a, that is turning sixty five. Right. <laughs> that could be like the time frame. <laughs> the time frame of them actually being able to help is. Multi generational. Um, but yeah, um, try to get the number down and we'll see what we can do. The 20, put, put the 23rd in here. Yeah. I mean, that's that's 20 days. That's yeah, that's about all we do. I mean, no, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you for all your hard work, Ron. <laughs> it's not an easy job. <laughs> I appreciate you and your road crew. No, it's yeah, actually it's pretty much impossible to do hundred percent of what you want to do in that in your job, I think. Yeah, I don't think it's possible. <laughs> it certainly won't make everybody happy. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ron. Yes. Have a good night. Happy New Year. You can you want to yep. Oh yeah, it was just so nice. <laughs> <laughs> the next item is to set fees for the annual license renewals so um normally we don't we never used to set the fees the fees used to just be what the fees are and the past two years we've done a pandemic 50 percent discount on all fees because you can't pick and choose um, we tried to, but I remember I remember that went to the lawyer that we we wanted to pick and choose just one or two one or two people favored favored recipients the favored license holders, but Not you can't I, you, you either have to give them all a fifty percent discount or eighty whatever discount, and the total amount of revenue that we get from these fees is Bernie. That was the same look you gave me when I asked you that last week. Um, it's like three or four thousand dollars tops. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Like, and that was that was like at full price. I don't think it's even that much. I don't think it's, it's even, not a yeah, lot. Not, yeah, and that that included like all the board of health things and everything. So, no, no, board of health is a separate. Yeah, I know. I, in my mind, I just I was well, so like yeah. the like the commercial fees for like doing business in Conway, right? Like the the, yeah, the so. license to sell victuals. Yeah, right. that's twenty five dollars. Right, right, right. The jukebox so, license. Yeah, the jukebox. Uh, that's twenty five too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because yeah, you need to license those to protect the children from demon music. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, and what else? Uh, what else? The, and like for the liquor license. Yeah, liquor. So all the, those types of things. But it's also some of the other ones, like weird ones, with a camping light, or whatever, the campground license. Well, and being allowed to to um, sell vehicles and you know sell yes. auto parts and that kind of thing. And I do know, you know, probably for ninety percent of the license recipients, they don't. It doesn't matter the diff the, the difference between. You know, twenty five dollars and twelve dollars fifty cents or whatever is not enough to make them want to pick up a phone and ask for relief from the select board. But there are a couple of residents in town to whom that that really really matters, and financially. And um, I'm not going to go into the details of that. I know Veronique that the same people that contacted me have contacted Veronique and told you the same. Tale of woe, um, and their desire to have this at, set at fifty percent again. So, well, um, having voted on this the past couple of years, um, I, and I like, I don't think even if we charged everyone one hundred percent, it's not a significant source of revenue for the town. I'm inclined to keep it the same for another year at least. Is that a motion? Yeah, I I move that we we keep the rates the same as uh, previous. Yeah, I don't know if I agree. Okay. So I I, I don't know if I agree because I don't know if I know enough information. So I guess I would assume 
full assumption that the reason that it was deducted 50% is because the whole world was on lockdown. Right. right. We're no longer on lockdown. Yeah. True. I, I would say that the economy has not recovered to the extent that uh, it had that, that. I mean, as Phil said, the the few people in town to whom this makes a big difference. Um, I feel like, you know, that's worth it, it, I mean, in the end, we're, we're talking about a couple thousand dollars for the town. It doesn't seem like a significant source of revenue for the town. I would rather encourage um, you know, businesses to keep <laughs> operating in town. Yeah, and I'm sure their revenues over the last couple of years have been awful. Mm -hmm. So I can understand that too. I'm just trying to understand like the reasoning behind the 50% reduction and how long we're going to say, okay, we'll keep continuing this discounted rate because we need to have reasons why. I do agree with you. They probably didn't make a whole lot this last couple of years. And if it helps them out, it helps all of us out. But at some point we have to say, okay, we got to get back to normal. Yeah. Prices. I agree with that too. <laughs> Having I, made that, I also agree that we're not at normal yet. No, yeah. Okay. Some of us are more Abby normal. Than <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> uh, so I think we could vote on it. I just want to put that out there. Like there needs to be an end, end period at some point in time. Agree. You know, hopefully people are able to, businesses are I mean, able to. We could include a note with everybody's license renewal thing saying it's 50% again, but that this might this might be the last year of that reduction. So I, think I, I mean, could we have like, people have to like, you know, petition for the reduction next time they apply? Oh, that's the other thing. You, no? you, you would if, if that was the rule, then that would be great. Um, that's the way it should be. But no, we can't do it that way. So, because um, it just makes way too much sense. But you can't pick and choose your favorites with license fees or with all things licensing. It's either the criteria, you know, either okay. either one or none, either one yeah. or all, okay. either none or all. Sorry. Um, so, all right. I, so I, I already made that motion. I'll stand by that motion. I'll second it. All in favor of one more, one last year? One, one more year. There's a difference there between one more and one last. Yes. And I do want to know that for letters that go out, if we say this is the last year, we know that now, then we should say that. If right. we don't, then I would suggest we just say one more year and revisit it. Again. Well, because you never know how if the pandemic that never is quite going to be over. Maybe it roars back with a vengeance. Maybe we get a new pandemic. Maybe there's some other horrible catastrophe that befalls us. Um, so at least two of us are going to be here again next year, right? <laughs> right. So I, I would say let's just say one more year. Right. I, I just wanted to bring up that point. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. We voted, right? Uh, we vote? No. Yeah. I I, well, okay. did, I, All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's unanimous. Um, items not anticipated 48 hours. Anything? Oh, we need to set the date unless you are in the paper. Oh, yeah. Um, no, yeah. that's on the agenda. Um, do you have any thought? Did, I do. I'm not really up to discuss Chancellor's Louise in the night. Um, but it's just picking a date. Just to set a date. Yeah. Um, I, I, it's a balance here. To, the, the later the date, the more finite our information is, not just with respect to the transfer station finances, but with respect to town finances in general and, um, and the ability to spend things, whatever. So Versus the earlier we do it, the more certainty there is and the more ability there is to plan appropriately, et cetera, et cetera. So It'll probably help out with that. But well, my the idea that I have that I'd like to bring to the table for the transfer station and what that would how that would impact the budget. Is that what you're asking? I have no idea what you're talking about. Oh, I thought you were talking about planning the budgets. 
No, just it, I think it was at that timing about whether we should have the forum sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. That's I think that's what. But okay. I, the logistics of it, as far as actually printing stickers, like you know, changing business processes at the transfer station. I mean, my understanding from Jan Amin is that we need like a like a few months to get all of that in place. So we, I we feel do. like. It depends on when the select board wishes to make changes, if they vote to make changes. So if you wish to start something in the next fiscal year, then you really should have a forum sooner rather than later and then vote to on your new system sooner rather than later because everything should the, be in place by May. The, the only thing that the select board has voted with respect to the transfer station future is not to put it on less on the war of the special town meeting warrant. Right. The select board has not made any decision as to how they wish to proceed in the future with respect to the transfer station. So for the town administrator to say, this is what you're doing, isn't quite, that's not how we voted. I was, we haven't, saying, this is what you're doing. I was saying, should, if should you this, wish to, and if that's what you vote, then, and you want to do it beginning in the beginning of the fiscal year, then working backwards, you need to have everything set by May. But if you don't want to do that, that's fine. It's that's the board's vote. I was only talking about the timing in terms of what Erica was saying with the logistics of it. And well, and I'm just thinking that we, just we about, might want to have just, more than one public. I mean, I I would prefer to have more than one public hearing. I mean, just to like if someone can't make one of them, like you know, give people options. I mean, I feel like the more we yeah, can, you know, I, I, I still am in favor of doing this at at town meet at town meeting. I think it's complete masochism to just for, for the select board just to do it. I, you know, the, the thing that I always remember is Dan Amin saying, "Oh, the first two months, the whole town hates you, but they get over it." I just think that that's something that we don't need to have that we can. Yeah, but I but I think the danger is but, that like the whole town hates you, and so they vote against it, and so you've set a precedent. They don't They're not going nearby. to. But but that's I mean like are you willing to take that risk? That yeah, just seems and, and, and you, to you, well if you know the, the the whole the whole idea was to do this in a non-binding format, and that it, that that the vote is an advisory vote by town meeting. And it's up front that these are the choices that the select board will permit you to do. And one of the one one of the choices is not do nothing. And one of the choices is not unlimited free stickers. Like um, it's it's but it's just a way, you know, and you're not giving town meeting a free choice. You're giving them a highly restricted, highly directed choice with guardrails that cannot be overcome. And, right. and that but way, so, it, so, so and, and that, that but that's way, still an option. We we still could. I mean, I think it it makes sense to start with like a public forum in the next month or two. And and that either way, whether what, and we still could put it on town meeting agenda for annual town meeting if we decide that's how we want to go. But I feel like I just I want to do the the public. I think meeting. I think that that when you look at it, that whether or not it is determined by town meeting, or um by the select board itself either way we're going to need stickers why either way we, yeah why don't we do a combination of the two why don't we have a meeting to discuss the idea so the townspeople can make an informed decision when it comes up at town meeting that's all i wanted i just want people to know here's the reasoning behind why we want to change it why we feel it needs to change and hopefully you see the same way we do and can no, vote that during town. I, and that, you know when 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 that when that when when the board voted whenever that was to 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 not put in the warrant and and Erica made that the, what I remembered of what everything was said. I remember Erica saying she wanted meetings, <clears throat> and and I, as when I as soon as I told people that they're like yeah that's that's a good idea. Um, that that's everybody was like um, even people that were lobbying to do nothing. Um, I remember oh, right, up, right, that right outside of the special town meeting, that couple was, I was talking when, when Erica came out of the parking lot and, and, and I was like, er, Erica had this idea to do, to do me and, like, and, and they were, and, and even them, even they said, yeah, that, that's a really good idea. So, 
like I, I thought I, I, so I, I, I mean, I would say let's why don't we have like one later this month? Um, I mean, I, I, I would be on the side of having more meetings, but then also just like, I don't know, I mean, we have like weekly select board meetings, like just make it known, like this is coming, you know, invite people to the public comment period, you know, limit it maybe to like half an hour or whatever. I don't know if it's going to be. Um, but but this month is a bit, I mean, well, the problem with January or February is nobody really likes to get out of their house, but um, but when 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 Brian was talking about it, you you had suggested March or April. Well, mm, no, no. But what I was thinking is not to do it on the select board night because this was a special right. public forum yeah. just about the transfer station. Because I think if you try to squeeze this into the budget process, that's not going to. That's happen. what I was trying and, to say. And, and you want and you want to have it in the in the. Uh, I was going to say the visitor. Oh, know, the first, that's yeah, that's yeah, probably yeah. in honor of Mary Ann that's still here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the soonest would be like because I just got the visitor in the mail like yeah. yesterday. So yeah, it's the comic courage though. That's right. Yes, yeah, the I visitor still... was probably was probably copyrighted or trademarked by the, the church. I don't know. Um, I thought you, were you know, that. honestly, I always thought the visitor was like the creepiest name. Like I just was like, why is it called the visitor? Like <laughs> it's like <laughs> you're just visiting. I don't know. I always like I like Conway Currents better, but <laughs> I still think of it that way. I do too. It is good. Um, so sometime in February then? Yeah, and I, so uh, does it matter if it's a Tuesday or Thursday? What I would do is look at the at the calendar and see when the ConCon versus the planning board is meeting and we just hold it, you know, see which week. It is not yeah, their I, meeting night. I, if you want if, if you want people to come out, the 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 best chance the you get the biggest crowds in a Friday or Saturday night. Um, really? That I know, but that's that's been proven by the nonprofits in town that host events and all that. But I, I'm fine. I don't care. Whatever day works for everybody else. So I don't care. And what else would you want to do on Friday night except talk about the track? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Get it at at the transfer track. station. <laughs> we open this transfer station just one night only for <laughs> a public. I always thought these types of meetings would be Cocktails better at the, Conway, and, at the Conway Inn. And part of the key award prizes for the best trash related cocktail idea. I don't know. <laughs> um, I good. would I would vote for a Thursday it's in February. Thursday. Um, but I would also be open to doing like a third if like you know, two days in a row, a Thursday and a Friday. Uh, I mean, I, I assume Jan Amin's gonna be there. We'd probably have to um make sure she's Willing and available. That's one of the reasons I wanted to set the date tonight was so we could definitely. Yeah. Um, so I'll I'll look and see on the town calendar which Thursday in the middle of February is not the um, planning board, and then we'll, we can hold it on that one. Does that make sense? Yeah, I got it. I don't have my school calendar with me, but okay, like it's great. Like the but, next. Yeah, month. I know that um that week of probably not the week of February nineteenth because that's school <laughs> vacation week. So that would mean like the 16th in of general, February? In general, the second and third weeks are really, really busy for everybody the next few months. Like the yeah. first or fourth, the first or fourth week is when the meeting schedule the meeting schedules are much quieter. Okay, well back at, okay. The third week in um, February is school vacation week. But February sixteenth is the third week in February. Um, yeah, I'm just trying to go onto the website now and see when the planning and time comes. Out. Not as easy on the phone. It works, but <laughs> I'm fat fingered. This is like <laughs> all right. Um, so Thursday. You know what? Thursday the ninth looks open. There's the only two things I see on there is uh, Council on Aging Branch and the Girl Scouts from three to five. So you're correct. So um, before you book that. So can you set up the alternative of the fourth Thursday? 
which there's absolutely nothing on. Oh yeah, there's nothing on the 23rd. Yeah. Well, so I, I my only like vacation school week. vacation week, so that. I thought the vacation week is the third. No, the 19th. Yeah, the week of the 19th. Anyway, so what's the fourth? That is the fourth. Thursday. That is the fourth Thursday. Oh, no, you just said it was the third. No, no. the third right. Thursday would be the 16th. And there's, huh, I don't see plenty of board on that either. So I don't, let's see here. Okay, they're scheduled on the second, so that's fine. So actually, any of those would work. So we could do the, sorry, the ninth, the sixth, the ninth of the sixteenth, if it's in February on a Thursday. Here, yeah, try just put, put both and I'll, I'll check. Gotcha. Uh, the school calendar is kind of really complicated right now. So, I'm going to say 9th and or 16th because Erica, you were talking about doing two back to back, kind of. So, yeah, just the school big. I mean, I don't know, people go away. Right. Well, I'm assuming we could also record it and put it up on the YouTube channel, just like a regular select board meeting. So if right. people miss yeah. it, they could always go to the YouTube and find it. And we can schedule another one too if it seems like there is enough, you know, interest. Okay. Anything else on that? All right. So that's that. We don't need a vote to schedule a date. I do want to make a correction to the estimate that I gave earlier about what the total amount of revenue that the town gets from licenses, from these licenses. Um, it wasn't a couple thousand, like at full price, it would have been closer to 500, would have been under a thousand at full price. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, All right. so <laughs> last year at 50%, the total amount of revenue um, to the town was, uh, under under four hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> so that's that's kind of important. So what what we're what we're talking about is five hundred dollars, not thousand. Yeah, and we can really help people out with that five hundred dollars. It will be very much appreciated. Um, town administrator update. The only thing I had on my update was that the selection committee for the new police chief has been set. Um, so I've spoken with Howard Boyden, Mary Irvin, Jan Warner, and Phil and myself would make the five member um, selection committee. And we will be getting underway immediately. I'm meeting with the chief tomorrow to talk about the job description update and that's really all I have. And this is the initial screening committee. The choice Correct. of hiring is made by the select board. Correct. So we'll be doing all the, the interviews of the finalists. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to solicit your opinions as to how many candidates you think is appropriate for the select board to interview, assuming that there's more than three applicants in total. Mm -hmm. um, but so basically, you know, the it's either like two, three, or four, or something like that. But um, well, we may not be able to determine that until you see the applicant pool, really. But I would say it has to be at least two. That you yes. Hopefully, we. <laughs> Having served on a million search committees in my professional career, like the initial and the second round, I always err on the side of more candidates you know I mean I wouldn't want like like I never like if I'm the first round committee I never want to be constrained to like you can only put three forward you know right. like if there's four that you think are really great and you just can't decide so I mean I wouldn't like I I, I feel like that would be a really good problem to have that we actually yeah. have like you know four or five no five artificial candidates. constraints that's a good right. policy yeah Select board member comments, concerns, anybody? So I think it, um, somebody today, that when we talk to Natalie, get her to, we want a law that says we can see the governor and lieutenant governor's tax returns. 
<laughs> people people have been enjoying going through the former president's tax returns. And uh, the thinking is, boy, it would be neat to see who the governor is. Uh, what how, how many foreign bank accounts our yeah. governor has? Yeah, right. And uh, yeah, yeah. What what the, what their various financial entanglements are? My guess is they're probably already public. I don't know. Nobody nobody ever makes a big. Nobody says I want to see Biden's tax returns. You can you can see them in one one click. You can see all his tax returns his whole life. But, right. Yeah. That's uh, so nobody nobody cares about it then. But. Yeah, so it's only interesting if you can't see it, if they try to keep it from you. Well, I've heard that argument that if you make um, it, you know, mandatory disclosure, like disclose your tax returns mandatory, that's going to discourage people from running from public office. But then I'm like, well, would you really want people running? For, like, yeah. I mean, like if, if that's a deal breaker for people, do you want that person to, you know, be in office? I don't know. Like, <laughs> But there's all kinds of things about tax law that I totally don't understand. So, no, no, I don't. We have to sign it at some point. You, you do, but um, yeah, right. We'll. I think we're going to have to wait. Yeah, I'm sorry, because we have to get the applications first and money. <laughs> so, and can't, we can't get the money. Couldn't get the money until we have. Okay. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Mail was just the multiple requests from people that want licenses at 50%. <laughs> um, uh, um, announcements. Uh, next meeting is Tuesday, January 17th, because the Monday is Martin Luther King's Day. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. Okay, our next meeting is Tuesday, January 17th at 6 p.m. Same bat time, no. same bat town. We have the Eversource poll hearing at five, right? Oh, uh, the poll hearing. Yes. How exciting. Right. <laughs> so that's at 5:30. Five. That's at five. Yeah, we could we, we, we five, yeah. yes, we we're trying to maximize our chance of not getting stood up by Eversource. I still give it a 50-50 shot just based on prior experience. Love um, a good poll hearing. What time? About 35. Five o'clock. Five o'clock on the 17th. Yes. For the poll hearing and then go in and click. My guess is we'll be at the Conway in at 510, but um. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's lay our bets now. Someone buy strings. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so we have a poll hearing first, five o'clock, Tuesday the 17th, and then the select board meeting at 6 p.m. And if anybody out there wants to tune in for a poll hearing, be my guest. It's fascinating. Other than that, okay. motion, to, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everyone. Aye. Good night. Good night. Good night, Marianne. Thank you again, Marianne. Thanks, Hi, Chris. Thank you, Chris. <laughs>